a big injury in the NFL. The Los Angeles Chargers announced today that Pat or Justin Herbert, Patrick Herbert, yeah. <laughs> Justin Herbert, You're, you've got Doug Brain has plantar fascia, and he's going to be in a boot, das boot, for two weeks. What's what's a what's a bigger boot gate this summer? Dak yeah. Prescott being spotted in a boot in Cabo, yeah. and all of Dallas having a collective freakout, or all of Los Angeles freaking out over Justin Herbert in a boot for two weeks? I would say Los Angeles because Dallas fans, you're probably not going to pay Dak. <laughs> yeah, he's not, there, he's not there for the long term. You're like, oh god, no, this makes our season suck too. It, it, look, plantar fascia, plantar fascia, and plantar fasciitis. They both suck so much. That is something that it lingers, mm -hmm. and In two weeks is not going to fix it. It's not just like a oh nope gone. It is something that will linger with you for a while, and that is of concern. I mean, it would be more concerning if he was a corner or a wide receiver. But when one thing that Herbert uses his mobility is a weapon for yeah. him, and it's not like a weapon like Lamar Jackson and his mobility. But it's a, it's a weapon like Josh Allen. Create the extra time, yeah. and then he could take off and run, and he can be a threat with his legs. And if that slows him down at all, yeah, now we're now we have a big issue. The other issue there is you're gonna throw Easton Stick in at quarterback with Lad McConkey and DJ Chark as your two top targets no you're not feeling good about it's that at super all difficult for me to get behind a quarterback who's named after copy or hockey equipment yeah, easton stick go grab your easton stick yeah it's like oh that could be a, an injury that looms large hey maybe, maybe this is the the year where harbaugh's like all right we're gonna crash this thing into the side of the mountain because we're in trouble is he going to collect offensive linemen like Infinity Stones? Yes. And he got Joe Alt this year. Yeah. He's already got Rashawn Slater, which they move uh, over to the right side. Like, they're going to be go – get, uh, go, go, go get a get monster tight end. Go get a, go get a monster tackle, or a monster interior lineman. You could do it. I mean, there's not out of the realm of possibilities. Yep. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing is that this past year we saw a receiver group that was like 12 deep. And guys are going to be more ready-made to go and be successful in the NFL early at wide receiver anyway, just because of the nature of the beast. Seven on seven, the training aspect of what you're seeing from receiver play in NFL-style offenses. This receiver group coming up this year is not nearly as deep as what we saw last year's receiver Crop. As of right now, I am scrolling through, and I don't see a single wide receiver in the top 20. Well, I think that may change, too, though. As we get going, as, yes. As we get going, but it, it is not – you don't have a list of freaks all back to back to back to back. And so that I mean, will, unless you want to call Travis Hunter a wide receiver, which, yeah, which probably I, is in I the think, NFL. He, I think he's yeah. a better wide receiver than he is a corner. Yeah. And then after that, it's Tedero McMillan at Arizona. But. Yeah, you got, you got Hunter – McMillan, then you also have got – and look, Travis Hunter in L.A., if there's a coach that would love to have a guy to try and play spots both ways, it's Jim Harbaugh. Mm -hmm. But uh, you also have guys like – Evan Stewart. Emeka Igbunka yep. at Ohio State. Evan Stewart could be that guy at, at Oregon and develop into that and be a first-round caliber. It's just not that – Surefire can't This isn't miss. that class of no. wide receiver. No, but there's there's obviously other There's going to be dudes. And but we, this is, we're, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. It's only two weeks right now. Uh, Herbert should be able to play through it, and it won't be a big <laughs> it's deal. It's the Hall of Fame game we're talking about, the 2025 NFL draft. But, but Football's this back, is the, baby. But this is the thing with the Chargers is that, look, you know where your division goes through, and it goes through Kansas City. Yeah. And that division outside of Kansas City, they're they're going through a lot of what the AFC East went through with the New England Patriots. Is that when you have the dynasty there, everybody starts reaching on. All right, you always try to beat the best team in your division. That's how it has always been in the NFL. And all of a sudden, you're taking a look around and going, "All right, what are the expectations for the Chargers this year?" It is if you can't figure out that receiving core, it's going to be a long year, and you're going to be looking at, you know, nine or ten win season because they are talented. Almost everywhere else, except for receiver and running back, where you just don't have playmakers offensively in a playmakers league. And then the Raiders have a long way to go. Uh, they have a good defense. They have Devonte Adams right now, but sure. you don't. You no longer have Josh Jacobs. You don't have a quarterback. They've got their concerns. Denver. That roster is just a long ways from winning, and they have a rookie quarterback mm -hmm. that will likely be starting in Bo Nix. 
Yeah, I was just thinking, would Xavier Worthy be the number one wide receiver with the Chargers? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rob. No, M- McConkey, McConkey would be. You think so? Yeah, because okay. he he is – McConkey can get open yeah. no matter what. But like that, he's, that is he's his used key. to playing small already. He is fast, but he is a phenomenal route runner, yeah. and his spatial awareness underneath is uh, incredible. Lad McConkey is a good wide receiver. I don't know if he's like a number – well, no, he's not a number one wide receiver in the NFL right now. One, because we've never seen him play in the NFL, but two, he – he just isn't that guy right now. Uh, he isn't. He isn't a game breaker on the outside. Worthy, Worthy can be a game breaker for you yeah. because, just because of the sheer speed at four two, and McConkey's four three eight guy. It's not he's, like he's, he's, not, slow. he's not slow. He's not out there, you know, four six chopping him up. But there is a difference between four three eight and four two because there are other guys that run four three eight. Anybody else that runs as fast as Xavier Worthy? Though? No, when you run those combine records, it gets a little it gets a little freaky. Yeah. Yeah, little twitchy. And then there's this, too, uh, the Vancouver Ford tax line. As long as the Spanos family owns a team, they'll win nothing. I mean, you're not wrong, probably. I wholeheartedly agree with that. You know, I mean, I want to believe more in the Chargers because the Harbaugh effect is a real thing. Like I, I think he's a generational coach in, in the – most successful vein we've we've ever seen no doubt about uh, it whether it's at stanford or at michigan or with the 49ers it just doesn't seem to matter he takes a team no matter what they are and where they are and yeah. turns them into a championship cal like that stanford team was a team that was legitimately one of the best teams in the country that michigan team won a national title that's that 49ers team is right there on the doorstep i mean to be that successful at every stop, that just that's not a circumstances thing. That's a creating your own circumstances well, type of thing. And the, that's what's insane. The immediacy of their success, mm-hmm. right? Because if you remember, you know, the <laughs> the 49ers were an absolute disaster. They were a dumpster fire before you got there. They went from six and ten with Mike Singletary and Jim Tom Sula to thirteen and three, losing in the conference championship game year. One oh, under pretty, Jim Harbaugh. Pretty good. Uh, it is he can turn it around and he can do it very quickly. And I think that is something that you you look at with Harbaugh and you say, all right, if you have the if you have the pieces, he can he can make something happen. He's a great chef, right? He has all the ingredients. He can make it happen. The one thing that I think if you are a 49ers fan that is, or excuse me, a Chargers fan that is the scariest part about this. Mm-hmm is the fact that you're sitting there going, here we go again with the injuries. Because every single year, they get ravaged by injuries, whether it's Keenan Allen, Mark, uh, Mike Williams, Derwin James, Nick Bosa, uh, Kenneth Murray. They, like every single year, you have a rash of injuries, and it's starting with Justin Herbert in week one. Last year was Herbert, too, with the with – the finger injury. Yeah, it, that's right. It, they happen early, and yeah. it derails them every single year. Now you're thinking, all right, maybe Harbaugh, new strength and strength staff, new training staff, maybe that things are going to be di- – nope. Cures some of the ails, and then sometimes it's just, you know, you have players that have those issues. And uh, with the wide receiver core, which is why, I, in part, I think they were willing to move on. It was because – whether it was Mike Williams, whether it was Keenan Allen, they would just pick up knocks every single year. And it's it's not a knock on a player. It's just that some players just, they aren't bulletproof. You think it's the curse of San Diego? The curse of San Diego? You, you leave San Diego and yeah, this happens? Yeah, it could happens. be, there for sure. Is.